quick little video today. I didn't set up my lights or anything, I'm just using the window light. I wanted to go over fragrance terms. What are they and what do they mean? Fellas, how's it going? It's Robert, your everyday gentleman. And today, like I said, we're going over fragrance terms. Not the full glossary, because there's so many different terms when it comes to fragrances, but what I feel are the more common ones that you might encounter as you're going out, discovering new fragrances, maybe you're going shopping. I think it's important to know these things because you are spending hard-earned cash, whether it's 20 bucks or 400 bucks, 500 bucks, whatever it is on these scents. So the more you know, the more knowledge you have on these bottles, the more confident you'll feel as you're purchasing them. Let's get started. The first term is concentration. Concentration is basically how much of the fragrance oil is inside of that bottle that you're purchasing. A lot of it is diluted, a lot of it is water, but different concentrations will have different amounts of that actual fragrance oil inside of it. You'll often see concentrations described as, forgive my pronunciation here, eau de toilette or eau de cologne, eau de parfum, parfum, things like that. These are the different amounts of concentration of that oil that has the actual fragrance that's inside of that bottle. I'll put a little graphic here so you can kind of see what that looks like. There's a number of different ones out there, but that's what it means when you see those different terms on the bottle or on the packaging of the, of the fragrance that you're purchasing. The next term is top notes. Top notes is the initial ingredients in that fragrance that you smell when you first spray it. It's a very nice smell. It's also known as the opening. Usually this is a very, very nice smell. I mean, that's what the manufacturers want because that, you know, you smell it, you want to get that initial reaction. If you enjoy it, you don't enjoy it. But it's important to know that that initial smell most likely isn't going to last throughout the entire life of that scent being on you or on your person. That brings me to the next term, which is the mid and base notes. There are two separate ones, mid and base notes, but to me, it's essentially the same thing. Um, this is what people will call also the dry down. This is after you've been wearing that cologne or after it's been sitting on yourself or on the little card that they give you at the counter, at the fragrance counter, and it's dried down maybe for 20 minutes, 30 minutes, every fragrance is gonna be a little bit different, but after that initial settling uh, and drying of the fragrance, you'll start getting into the deeper part, the base notes, but this is where the majority of that scent is made up, and this is what you're most likely gonna be smelling for the remainder of that scent. The next term we have is longevity. Longevity is pretty self-explanatory. Longevity is how long that scent is gonna last on your body, how long you're gonna be able to smell it on you. Doesn't matter if it's up close or you know from a distance, it's how long you can actually smell that cologne. Now these next two terms sometimes get a little confusing. Some people think it's similar, but there are some differences in what they mean. The first one that I wanna talk about is projection. Projection is how far away from your body. If I'm standing here, for example, how far away from me is somebody gonna be able to smell that scent? That's gonna vary depending on the, the scent itself that you're using or how much of it you actually sprayed on. What people will associate with your projection is something that's called a scent bubble. Um, just picture a bubble around you that is holding that scent and then when somebody gets into that bubble, they get a whiff of whatever it is that you're wearing. You don't want that bubble to be huge. I would say as long as it's projecting maybe a couple feet away from you, that's a nice, that's a nice amount. And now the other term that's similar to projection is known as sillage. Now sillage or sillage as people say, I've heard both ways, I don't know what it is. Put down in the comments whatever you think it is. Put a little pronunciation thing down there. But sillage or sillage is basically how long that scent lingers in the air. So kind of like that scent bubble, that you create with the projection, but now you're considering you were standing in this place, for example, and you walked away and somebody else walks into that space that you were in, is that scent still lingering in that air? So you may not be in that vicinity anymore, but they walk into that space that you've been in and are they still able to smell it? Next term, synthetic. When you hear the term synthetic, most likely they're talking about the ingredients that are inside of that fragrance. Synthetic basically means it's a man-made scent. Natural would be the opposite of that, of synthetic. You know, you actually squeeze juice out of uh, citrus, of an orange, or oils out of a rose petal, something like that. That would be more natural, where synthetic would be through a laboratory, the scent is broken down into different ingredients, and then it's recreated in that laboratory. Batch. Batch is basically the lot 
that was used for that particular scent. You'll see on the colognes, <clears throat> excuse me, on the scent bottles, there's usually, I don't know if you can see it, but there's a number there at the bottom, either stamped on or written on or etched on. Uh, that's basically the lot for that particular fragrance oil that went into that bottle. Now, for the most part, most scents are gonna remain consistent from bottle to bottle or from batch to batch or lot to lot, but there are some fragrances. You'll hear people talk about, oh, this is batch XYZ123, or I want batch XYZ123, I don't want 5678, because there are differences in that scent, maybe subtle, but enough for somebody to notice and wanna prefer a different scent. For me, I don't really care. The smell is pretty consistent from bottle to bottle, um, so that's the main thing for me. The next term is an atomizer. The atomizer is the spray head that you see on your cologne. Most bottles, there used to be splashes, and there still are some out there that are splashes, but like I talked about again in my previous video, you don't wanna rub that scent because it starts breaking things down, starts taking those top notes into the bottom notes a little bit faster, and it starts killing that life and makes it die down a little bit sooner. But the spray is basically known as the atomizer. It just creates that scent cloud or the, the, the cloud that, that you're gonna go into or you're gonna spray onto your body just so you're not getting a huge chunk in one particular space. You know, it spreads out pretty evenly and you want a nice atomizer. Now, you really have no control over what bottle has what. Um, it's just basically whatever the manufacturer puts on there. Um, this bottle, for example, the Valentino is a great scent, but it's not, it's not the best atomizer. This thing shoots out kind of like a super soaker. I don't want to spray it right now. Well, let me just go ahead and spray it. You can see that, I don't know if you can catch that on the camera, but it shoots a very narrow stream and then it kind of opens out at the end. So if you shoot this onto your skin, it's going to just hit you like, <laughs> like a water gun and just kind of splash off and man, it smells pretty good. It's not really optimal for me. So in comparison, let's try this, uh, Coach Platinum, see if you can catch this on the on the video. So you see that opened up and it created a little cloud. I hope you caught that on there, uh, but it created a little cloud of, uh, of the fragrance. And that's really what you want is you want it to open up and spread out a little bit. You don't want it to have a heavy concentration that's going to drip. And especially if you're spraying it onto your clothes, if you do a heavy spray like that that's going to shoot into one particular spot that's when you run into the risk of potentially staining your clothes now the last term that i'm going to go into is a decant or decanting decant is basically a small bottle um, these little uh these little travel sizes are what i call decants uh, this is something i did for um this bottle of valentino like i said i don't like how that one sprays so I, uh, I like these little travel decants or travel atomizers um, because it makes it easy to travel with your fragrance. Uh, I don't, you know, if I wanna carry different ones, if I'm going away for a week, let's say, and I like wearing different colognes on different days, I'll get some of these. These are pretty cheap to buy. I like these little twist up ones. I have different ones with a cap and these little twist up ones. Um, but these are pretty cheap to buy. And uh, if you're interested in knowing how to decant, let me know and I'll work up a video for that. Um, but like I said, I decanted the Valentino because this does a, a much better spray cloud. You see, it's not as much as the actual juice comes out, but you know, you do two or three sprays. I prefer to do that than have that spray hit you, like I said, really bad and just create a, create a mess. But this is a decant. Um, oftentimes, if you're looking for a scent, if you're looking to sample, I had mentioned before in the previous video, I'll link that video here. Um, sample stuff. There's people out there that will sell you a little sample like this, different sizes. Um, this is a, a nicer size. I believe this is an eight milliliter uh, decant. Um, and you can get these, purchase them for much cheaper. You can try the cologne. There's subscription services out there that send these out. You don't necessarily need to do that, but there's people out there that, that are willing to sell you a portion. Um, you can try it out on your skin, on yourself. Um, make sure it mixes well with your chemistry before you actually decide to shell out you know, some dollars on an on a actual full-size bottle. But that's basically it for this video. If you enjoyed this video, 
Make sure you hit that like button down below. Put down in the comments if there's any terms that you've heard as you're going around shopping for fragrances or looking at fragrance videos and you're not sure you fully understand. Put that in the comments down below and I'll do my best to help answer and clarify that. Remember to subscribe and hit that notification bell so you catch all our future videos. And remember, being a gentleman is an everyday thing. See you in the next one, fellas.